Do you guys know the ayah in the Quran that says two female witnesses? For years, and I was like, yeah, but why? I never quite understood it until I was sitting on the board of the masjid. And every time the men would get into like a big ego fight of who's more manly, they didn't care that I was sitting there. When we were figuring things out and we just need to get stuff done, we were just getting stuff done. But when it turned into an ego fight, I was invisible. And every time I would sit there and I'm like, yeah, Allah, if only I had another woman. And suddenly clicked in my head and I was like, okay, this is a situation where she's far more likely to get dismissed. If people are fighting over the money and it's a big deal and they were supposed to write it down because that's what the ayah is telling you and they didn't write it down and now they're bringing these witnesses and there's one woman and there's one man who are like, do women know anything about money anyway? Right? We all know this. We've all been in meetings where you're like, let's get lunch. And then Bob says, let's get lunch. And everybody's like, great idea, Bob. <laughs> and if you say, I said, let's get lunch, you'd be like, okay, but don't be petty, really. Like, who cares about getting the credit, right? But then you have a second woman that's literally there to echo what you said. The women in the Obama administration used to do this. They called it echoing. So Sakina's my friend. Sakina says, let's get lunch. I immediately respond and say, Sakina just said, let's get lunch. Whether I agree with it or not, that's not the point. The point is I'm literally lifting up my sister's voice. And we keep doing this. How often has a small group changed something big? Also, like overcome a larger group, but also the reality is the vast majority of people want a healthy community where their families can thrive, where their children can thrive. It's usually just one person that's just yelling louder than everyone else.